Good morning, folks. Man, we got a good show for you today. A lot of big, several big stories. We got to get to it and run through it uh, before we get started, though. Do any of y'all's cats hate minions? I, I swear to God, I, I bought, you know, I collect mugs. I, I do. I collect mugs. And I found this minion mug because I wanted a place to keep my pins. I always, you know, I don't want to dig through my drawer. I'm constantly losing my pins here on this mess of a desk. And uh, I just wanted a cup of pins here. Every damn day she knocks this thing over. Every single day. I was just, that's what I was just doing before I came in here was picking up a pile of pins because she just can't leave my damn minion alone. Ah. <sighs> So anyways, let's get to it. Let's get after it. Fill your coffee cups. Oh, I made a mistake there too, folks. Oh my God, did I make a mistake there? Whoo, I did. Got up this morning and uh, coffee pot was in between. You know, we make a couple pots before the show. Um, one of them ran out and I said, you know what? Next pot, I think I'm going to have some uh, caramel macchiato in my coffee. So, but I don't like cold coffee. I don't. And we keep the creamer in the fridge and I don't like cold coffee. So I poured some in my mug and while the coffee was brewing, did its thing, you know. And then I went to go into the fridge and I said, you know what? Uh, let's do something a little different. I want, you know, I, I love, I love fall. I love everything fall. O Sam Adams, Oktoberfest beer, um, the pumpkin spice. I'm a pumpkin spice addict, and that's where this is going. Uh, bought a case of K cups from Sam's and uh, went in to get some pumpkin spice. Forgot I had the caramel macchiato in my cup. Now I have caramel macchiato pumpkin spice, and I think I have a new addiction. Oh, that was a mistake. That was a mistake. <laughs> oh my god, this is so good. Mm. Anyways, we got big stories. Let's get to it. Let's get to it. You know, folks, I always tell you, I hope your coffee's as good as mine, but I swear to God, I know this morning, it, 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 unless you've got pumpkin spice caramel macchiato, it isn't. It just isn't. Oh, my God, this is good. Mm. I did not need a new addiction. Okay. Start off with Happy Easter. With several big stories, but I, I want to, I you know, look, I don't, you know me, I don't do Abrahamic religions, but Easter is a very important day to a lot of Christians. It is the most important day for a lot of Christians. Uh, and I just want to wish you a very, very, very happy Easter, whether you are a, a devout follower or you're like me and it's just National Ham and Chocolate Bunny Day. Um, I want you to have a happy Easter. This spring, I don't know why, this spring is hitting very different. It just feels really good. I walked into Sam's the other day and they were putting the bouquets of flowers out and there were all the spring flowers. And I just, man, I have happy Easter, happy Easter. It is going to be a good day. It is also, um, it is also transgender, uh, transgender, uh, a day of transgender visibility. March 31st, back in 2009, uh, an activist by the name of Rachel uh, Crandall, back in Michigan, uh, started Transgender Recognition Day. Because you know, it's, it's what I talked about before, when, we, when the Republicans, you know, it was the hot news story where the Republicans were really attacking transgender people. Well, they're back at it today. Um, the reason they did it, and I, I told you the reason they did it, is not a lot of people know transgender people. Uh, 
so they can define them and create a boogeyman and attack them and sell it to their people. And you don't have a lot of a frame of a lot of personal frame of reference. A lot of people don't know transgender. There aren't that many transgender people. So the idea of a transgender day, a recognition of transgender people, um, was very dangerous to Republicans and right wingers. Because the more you know about people, the more you realize they're just people. They're just people. The thumbnail for today's show uh, has two transgender models on it. The two folks, of course, not the guy on the right that looks like he's filling a diaper, but the two folks on the left are transgender. They're models. In fact, if you, if you, if you, do a search. If you do a search for transgender models, and yes, it is recognized internationally. I'm getting to that. I love you folks. You're so far ahead of things. I mean, uh, I, I swear to God, y'all are always so far ahead. Miss Pam here, interna it's international too. It is. It's international. I, God, I love you people. But if you do a Google search, just for a transgender model, like I did here, they have there have been uh, kudos to the fashion industry. The fashion industry is always so social forward. They're always so much farther. They don't care. They don't care. They do, transgender people are just people. They just care what you look like. Transgender people have been selling us perfume, purses, blouses, dresses, jeans forever. Just do a search for transgender model. They're runway models. They're, they've been around forever. They've been in our ad campaigns forever. But of course, the Republicans have to make it weird. They just have to make it weird. See, back in you know, 2019, uh, 2009, when this first started, it wasn't that big a deal. In 2014, it just, it just grew, though. It just grew. Because, you know, people are just people. You know, why, why be negative? Why be ugly? Why be anti anything? Why be on the attack about anything? But good Lord, they are. Because in 2021, Joe Biden, th this thing that's been going on since 2009, Joe Biden says, hey, you know what? Let's recognize this a, a day of transgender rec, uh, visibility. Let's do it. Back in back in 2021, March 31st, 2021 was the first nationally recognized day of transgender visibility. Well, today is the 31st. And guess what else it is? It's Easter. And the Republicans, of course, are making it gross and making it weird and have found a reason to hate on Easter. Why not, right? It's their brand. I mean, it's one of the happiest days of the year. Why not have a little hate? So they've been going nuts because they are spinning a narrative, and it's always got to be made up shit. It's always got to be made up shit. They're spinning a narrative that Joe Biden just made this holiday this year to be on Easter. You know, he's just all about hating you Christians. You Christians can't just be good, happy, honest people living your clean lives. He's got to bring them transgender people into your Easter. <sighs> like there's something wrong with transgender people. I mean, look at him. I mean, they're calling them blasphemous. Just just a Google search of transgender visibility day. You get this guy who is apparently doesn't have enough pedophiles in his church to chase is attacking the Biden administration because this false narrative that they put together on the right, that some reason Joe Biden did this on purpose, just despite your Christian Easter. And I'm not kidding. They're going with that. You got Dan Crenshaw that's running with this narrative that, you know, Somehow, and, and the, the the hilarious part is their voters are so stupid that they don't know that Easter falls on a different day, even different months. Next next year, you, you, you got to love this. Next year, Easter is on four twenty. 
<laughs> oh my god that is gonna be so great oh my god ham chocolate bunnies and 420 uh that's next year folks but this year it just <laughs> oh my god uh jason johnson finally <laughs> But yeah, Easter falls on different days every year. This year it fell fell on a, a really great, great day, a day of trans visibility. But of course, you know, the Republicans have to push this narrative. You got Dan Crenshaw here. Please stop being weird. Tomorrow's Easter, not your made up woke holiday. Well, it's not made up and it's not woke and it's not a holiday. It's just a day of recognition. But, you know, you're, you're wrong on all counts, Dan. But you're a Republican. Everybody expects you to be stupid. The only people that we expect you to, to be stupider than you, Dan, is your voters. And they are. They're eating up. And of course, you know, uh, when I say Republicans, I mean Republicans, all Republicans. You've got, of course, you had to get old preacher Johnson you know, defending Easter, man, defending Easter. The Biden White House has betrayed the central tenet of Easter, which is the resurrection of Jesus Christ, blah, 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 blah. You know, folks, like I said, if you are a true believer, bless you on your holy day today. But only a Republican could be stupid enough to buy into the narrative that this is an attack on Easter. The day of trans, transgender visibility uh, is every year on March 31st. Easter moves. You could say your Easter fell on their, their day. Um, but Again, I've always said this. We all do better when we all do better. That's transgender folks. That's a, you know, they've been, you know, they're just people. They're just people. And that's the thing that scares the Republicans the most is that you just get to know people, members of the LGBTQ plus community, because you will find out that they're just people. Most of them are really good people. Like, like when you go meet people in general, most of them are really good people. They can't have that. Because their version of hate Christianity and Christian nationalism has to have an enemy. As repugnant as that sounds, it, it is true. They have to have an enemy. So, yeah, enjoy your Easter um, and enjoy your day of trans visibility. Go to Google, Google, Google transgender models, Google uh, transgender people and see how many people are out there just living their lives, folks, just working, selling you some perfume and stuff. You know, the, you, you meet them every day and don't even know it because they're just people living their lives and doing their thing. Anyways, that was our first story, folks. The second story is different. You know, the Republicans keep saying the quiet part out loud. And, uh, oh, my God, have they said the quiet part out loud. They are not hiding it anymore. The American Conservative Magazine Trump 2028, the 22nd Amendment is an arbitrary. That's that says you can't be president more than twice. That that's the 22nd Amendment. You know the old FDR thing. You know no more presidents for four terms. Uh, they're saying they want Trump for life. They want Trump for life. This is the headline and the article. You can read it yourself. It's the American Conservative. Trump 2028, the 22nd Amendment is an arbitrary restraint on presidents who serve non-consecutive terms and on democracy itself. And the article goes on to tell you how they think that they that, that Trump should be able to serve. And they believe, in their words, Trump is so popular. Trump is so popular that you're denying the American people 
this king. Folks, the 2025 project is out there. They printed it for you to read. Then you have the American, and I keep warning you about these think tanks. This is Pat Buchanan's think tank. It doesn't get more Republican establishment than Pat Buchanan. This is for folks who don't remember who Pat Buchanan is, ran for president. This is his think tank, folks. This is this is one of the blocks in the foundation of the conservative Republican Party who is saying, to hell with the 22nd Amendment, Trump for life. They're telling you, folks, they're telling you in their own words. They're writing it. They're not just telling you. They're not telling you. They're writing it down and then handing it to you to keep. They want Trump for life. They are telling you in their own words. This is Preacher Johnson yesterday telling you. Listen listen to what this man says. But we can have a bigger majority. You get that, you get the Senate. We're going to make big radical changes. I've, I've talked to President Trump and all my colleagues about what that first 100 days looks like, and you will see proof right out of the gate. I mean, aggressive changes to the regulatory uh, state, the, the deep state, the bureaucracy that's turned on the people and weaponized against them, to uh, the budgeting and spending, but we can have a bigger majority. You get that, you get the Senate. We're going to make big radical changes. I've, I've That deep state, those agencies that work against you, that's a 2025 project, folks. He's telling you. He is telling you. They're telling you they're going to make Trump the fascist ruler king of America. They're telling you we're going to gut the deep state. That That's your FBI, folks. That's your DOJ. That's all of your legal institutions that are are what make our country what it is. You know, presidents come and go. What makes America, America are our institutions, and they're telling you, out. We're gutting them. They're telling you to your face in their own words. They're writing it down and handing it to you. And folks, it's... I have to tell you, got some more news for you today. It's just getting scary out there. It is getting scary out there. You know, we've got these families in this country. You've, you've read about them in history. You know, you've got like the Rockefellers, uh, you know, and, and the Carnegies. These were people that there's no there's no modern reference for what John D. Rockefeller was and Standard Oil was. When they broke up Standard Oil, it became companies like Exxon. I'm telling you, there is no reference in history for how powerful and rich some of these families were. Most of them, most of them have not weathered well in time. There were so much wealth that, yeah, their 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 great 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 grandkids today are still trust fund babies and are still wealthy. By any measure, they're still wealthy, but they're not John D. Rockefeller Standard Oil wealthy. Most of them. A couple of families have hung in there. The Duponts. The Duponts are every bit as wealthy and powerful today as they were then. And there's another family that has hung in there. And it's not a good thing, folks. These are not great people. It's the Mellon family. Everybody heard of the banking magnet, Andrew Mellon? Quick cliff notes of his story, uh, the original, the, the, the 
the first Mellon, Thomas Mellon, came over from Ireland, uh, moved to Pennsylvania. His family were farmers in Ireland. He decided to break with, with, uh, with. Uh, thank you, Mark Wagner. I appreciate you, man. Thank you for the support. It's just, pre- just showing my appreciation for what you do. Keep doing it. I, always, man. Always. Thank you for the support. But Mellon came over here and said, you know what? I'm not going to be a farmer. I'm not. So he came, he educated himself, he passed the bar, he became the judge, he hoarded his money and opened a bank. And the rest is history. With $10,000 he scraped together, uh, within like a year, he had $800,000 in deposits. And the next thing you know, the Mellons were the banking dynasty of this country. Mellon Bank still exists today. It's one of the biggest in the world. That family is one of the wealthiest in the world. They have created systems within their own family. They have so much wealth in the Mellon family. They create trusts that skip generations just to make sure that the Mellon family and its wealth continues. And Andrew Mellon, the, the, the one that was really, he wasn't the first, but the patriarch that really brought the Mellons up to that level of wealth, um, he had a message for his kids. You know, we became a wealthy family not because we followed in each other's footsteps and every other wealthy family that follows in each other's footsteps, you look at them generation for generation and they, they go away. You will not do that. We will break this up into trusts. You will get wealth, but you will go your own direction. And they have, folks. They have. The the youngest one um, is in crypto. He's in crypto. But all of these melon kids have been a problem. And they've been a problem for a while. This is is Richard Mellon Scaife. The Mellons intermarried, but they kept their family name. Rich is Richard Mellon Scaife. The Scaife family was another Republican establishment. Uh, he's dead. He died in 2014. But he was famous because he funded all of the investigations into the Clintons. He paid private investigators just to go through every aspect of the Clintons' lives. He funded it all. When Hillary Clinton talked about, you know, this this right wing establishment that was working against them, this is what she's talking about. There is another melon out there. Uh, you've, you've never heard of him, but he's a recluse. This is a great article in the Washington Post talking about all that 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 Richard Mellon Scaife did back in the 90s and, and 2000s, uh, all the political shit that he funded. But there's another Mellon out there, Timothy Mellon. Timothy Mellon is kind of a recluse. We've got a picture of him uh, from about 20 years ago. He's very difficult to find pictures of. This is not what he looks like today. This is not what Timothy Mellon looks like today. This is Timothy Mellon in his 60s. Oh, sorry, wrong one. He's such a recluse, even his picture doesn't want to pull up. This is Timothy Mellon in his 60s. He's in his 80s now. He is a recluse, lives up in Wyoming. The only other picture I could find of him was his Yale graduation uh, yearbook picture (laughs) from back in the day. Uh, You don't find a lot of pictures of this guy, but he's a problem. He is a problem. He funds things for the Republican Party. I'll give you an example. Um, That whole stupid wall thing. They're, oh, well, we're the, you know, can't get the government to pay for it. We'll pay for it our damn selves and this, that, and the other. Well, that fell flat. Nobody was paying for that damn wall. Nobody. But to keep Greg Abbott and Trump from looking like failures, and and Timothy Mellon is a huge 
funder of Trump's PAC. Okay. Um, but to keep the whole wall thing from falling flat and failing. Thanks for the support, Brian. I appreciate you. He funded the wall. When they started building this stupid wall, nine out of ten dollars that paid for it came out of Timothy Mellon's pocket so that they could pretend like people, people want no. An old white guy that lives in Wyoming that funds Republican politics wanted it. But they wanted to pretend like this, you know. That's the whole thing, man, with this whole border thing is to pretend it's grassroots, pretend it's the people. Bandwagon. I've told you about the bandwagon effect, how they, how, you know, churches use it, advertisers use it. That's it. So he funded it so it wouldn't fall flat. And fall flat's kind of a funny way to put it because that, you know, that, that private wall they funded uh, is falling flat. See, the reason when the government does things that's so expensive uh, is because they do things like engineering. They build things to last. I don't know. They say, okay, we need this to last 100 years. So they engineer it to last 100 years. Well, when they built this privately funded wall, they just threw a big steel heavy wall up in uh, soil that can't hold it. And you're getting erosion and the damn thing's falling down. It's a freaking eyesore. Thanks for the support, guys. I really appreciate you. But he funds other useless things as well. Tim, you know, Timothy Mellon is more than willing to come out of his pocket, man. And oh, by the way, that wall contribution, just to piss you off even more, <laughs> tax write-off. Because he funded it with stock. He didn't sell his stock and write a check. Because he handed over stock, tax write-off. Yeah, no shit. No shit. He dodged taxes that now you and I have to pay because, you know, bills don't go away just because old Timothy Mellon doesn't want to pay taxes on his billions. Those bills don't go away. We got to pay those. But he got a tax break for donating to that stupid freaking wall. But he donated to other useless things like, uh, you know, you wonder how the hell this person stayed in politics for as long as she did with no support, Tulsi Gabbard. She was running on, on Timothy Mellon's dime. Hmm. He also funded AOC. No kidding. And kudos to AOC for taking his money. Kudos to AOC for taking his money. He funded AOC and, and her first uh, congressional campaign. Do you remember how galvanizing AOC was for Republicans? How much they all unified. Uh, she was a major draw for Republicans. She was unifying for them. They took, they tried to make her a punchline. She's the bartender. We're trying to make a congressman and uh, look how screwed up our party is because remember when she won her first election, she did it by work. I mean, she went out there, her candidate was not going back. The, her opponent was the democratic opponent was not going back to his district. He was not serving his people. She went out there and went door to door to door to door to door, knocked on doors and said, I want to be your Congressman. And she blew an establishment establishment Democrat out of the water. So here comes Timothy Mellon. Let me give you some money. To, to, to lift your campaign up, speaking of giving money, thank you, man. That was a big donation. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. Newest bill, 50 bucks is a lot of cash. Thank you. Happy chocolate day to you too, sir. But she was at the time. I mean, she it blew up in their face because she's become very popular, very effective, very well-spoken. They really underestimated her. But when he was given to her campaign, it was to submarine Democrats. At least that's what he thought he was going to end up doing. Well, he's he's got a new project that he thinks is going to do that. See, these guys have figured out Trump can't win. They figured out Trump cannot win. They have to fracture 
us. And that's what he's always done. Tulsi Gabbard was a Democrat that, that was under the control of a, of a Republican. She was funded by Timothy Mellon. They thought that they could use AOC as a, as a lightning rod for Republicans, galvanize Republicans together. So they funded AOC in her first campaign. They don't fund her anymore. <laughs> they don't want nothing to do with that anymore. But he's got a new, new trick up his sleeve. He's got a guy who thinks he can, that can pull us apart. He's got a guy that he thinks can peel off enough votes from Joe Biden to give Trump a chance to fracture us. And so far, it hasn't worked. Nobody on the, on the Democratic side is supporting this moron. It's RFK Jr., his campaign is funded by Timothy Mellon. That's his billionaire sugar daddy. And I tell you, the Republican Party is just full of them. Just, just, just stop right there and decide to. I tell you, these billionaire frat boys are funding these care, caravans. I'm telling you, I, I'm going to keep after that, and we're going to find out which one of those sons of bitches is paying, coordinating with the Russians down in Mexico City and the embassy where they coordinate this shit and, and put these caravans. Because we're going to get a caravan, folks. We are going to get a caravan. It's election, it's election time. There will be a caravan. I promise you one of these Republican frat boy billionaires is paying for it. These 80-year-old, worthless, useless individuals are paying for it. That's just a side note, but we're going to find it. But there, Timothy Mellon's project today is this jerk off, Robert Kennedy Jr. That, that's who he's funding. And it hasn't really worked out so well, but I have, I have a warning for you folks. And I need you to take this seriously. I need you to take this as seriously as a tiger just walked into your living room. Shit's about to change with RFK. And when I first put this out on social media, I got a very, very, very scary reaction. The reaction was, oh, don't worry, he just takes votes for, from Trump. Don't do that. Don't shrug what I'm about to tell you off. Don't. This, folks, you've heard me mention his name before. This is Frank Luntz. This is Frank Luntz. The corporate media always refers to Frank Luntz when they do talk about him as a pollster. He is not a pollster. Yes, he is a pollster. Yes, he does polls also. That is not what Frank Luntz does. Frank Luntz is as good as as it gets in politics. He is exceptional at politics. And what Frank Luntz does is he, he is not a shyster. He is not a shyster. Do not do that. Do not do that, MJ. Don't. Don't. Hey, MJ, don't do that. I am telling you, respect your enemy. Because... If what I am seeing pans out to be 100% true, which I believe it is, or I wouldn't bring it to you, uh, this is dangerous. Let, let me give you an idea. Yes, he's a wordsmither. He is a wordsmither. Before I do this, let me explain to you what he does, okay? Um, Frank Luntz t hires people. He hires focus groups. He has amazing political instincts. And he comes up with an idea that is like, you know, like a, a blunt cleaver. Then he hires focus groups. And he doesn't just hire Republicans. He hires liberals. He hires uh, union people. He hires every freaking walk of life and spends a fortune. He is not cheap, people. There's a reason it takes somebody like Timothy Mellon to hire Frank Luntz. And he brings them in. And he takes a message 
and he presents it to them. And he gets their reactions to it, and then he refines the message, and then he presents it to another group, and then he refines the message some more. And then he gets feedback from all the different groups and finds out where it's impactful, how it's impactful. Not only does he come up with messaging, he comes up with how to present the messaging. He is exceptional at this. And if you think I'm kidding, you folks that have been around politics will recognize these. Newt Gingrich's contract with America. It wasn't Newt Gingrich. It was Frank Luntz. Frank Luntz came up with a contract with America. It was one of the most successful political ploys in, in our history. It literally was ground changing for the Republicans. That was Frank Luntz, folks. That was Frank Lutz. The Republicans wanted to roll back estate taxes. I mean, pardon me, death taxes. That's Frank Lutz. The reason they all started saying death taxes at the same time is because Frank Lutz told them to. And it was effective. It was highly effective. And I, you, you want to know how effective it is and that it's not just Republicans? You say climate change. You say climate activist because Frank Luntz told you to. See, the term global warming was much more impactful. Much more impactful. Thank you for the support, Christian. I appreciate it. I, I love our international audience here. During the George W. Bush administration, they were smart enough to hire Frank Luntz. And Frank Luntz, that, that, was, that was the starting shots of the war. You remember George W. Bush came into office by beating Al Gore. Well, he didn't really beat him, but that's a whole other show. Uh, Al Gore. So he had to deal with the whole climate change thing that Al Gore was selling. And the first thing that Frank Lentz did is he took the entire administration together and said, if you say the word global warming, if you say the phrase global warming, you are fired. You will say climate change. You know why? People don't like change. It's not an engaging phrase. They told every member of the corporate media, you will not report on anything we say ever again if you say global warming. You will quote us as saying climate change or you'll lose your access. And as a result, you say climate change. He's that effective. He is. And yesterday, he went all in on RFK. Frank Luntz, no teleprompter, no teleprompter, no notes. Take note of RFK Jr. in his speech. Frank Lutz, attending a presidential campaign event with RFK Jr., followed by a Dodgers game. Doesn't get any more American than politics and baseball. This is all shared within the last 24 hours. In every interview with Frank, this is what he looks like today, by the way, folks, with Frank Lutz talking about how we Democrats are going to pay for our treatment of RFK Jr. and how we are snubbing him. Yeah, Timothy Mellon has hired Frank Lentz. And do not shrug that off, people. Do not shrug that off. I promise you, the RFK campaign is about to get very, very, very much less awkward. And their messaging is about to get much, much better. 
We're going to have to be vigilant. I tell you these things so that you know, so that you see them coming, so that you see them coming, and you know what's being fed to you. And it, I, I promise you, if I'm right about this, and I know I, I, I believe I am, and I'm talking to people in, inside politics, and they're all, it looks like Frank Lentz is on the case. That will be a point or two in the polls. At the polls, not in the polls, at the polls. It will be a point or two. Because he will, be, if anybody can make RFK appealing to even a small fraction of Democratic voters just to get a handful of people to not show up and vote Joe Biden, it would be Frank Lentz. And I am telling you people, pay attention. No. Know when those new messages come out, where they're coming from. Respect your enemy. Respect your enemy. Well, folks, we've got another big story. That this will make you happy. I didn't mean to scare the shit out of you, but you need to know. This will make you happy. Not to start with. <laughs> this is Star County, Texas. This is Star County, Texas. I want you to know where this is and what's been going on there and why this is important. This is Star County, Texas. This red outline here is Star County. It is in the middle of nowhere. There is nothing there. Rio Grande City, Roma City, these are the tiniest little towns you've ever seen in your life. It is situated halfway between Laredo, Texas, and down here you've got Brownsville, Texas, and, and then this is McAllen and Harlingen. This is the Valley farming communities. What's really significant about what's going on down here in Star County and the surrounding counties is this is a desert, not only in the fact that it's a desert, it is a desert for women's health care. The state of Texas, we have, we're the buckle on the Bible belt, folks. We have radicals here. We have some of the craziest churches you've ever seen. I mean, I don't mean like your, you know, mom and pa go down to the church on Sunday. I mean, the, the, the really radical weird churches are here. And folks, there has been nothing but warfare on women in Texas. I mean, it's just brutal what's been going on. And one of the ways that they've been doing it down in South Texas is through local and state regulation, they have been doing things like this, just one example uh, of how they wage this war is they say in the name of, of protecting women and good health care, they say if you are a clinic that engages in women's reproductive health care, you must now fall under the same regulations that we put on hospitals. Now, folks, when you walk into a hospital, you said dark money from the American robber baron oligarchy. There's your deep state. Happy Easter. A Amen. Amen, brother. Amen. Amen for summing up the show. Good job, my man. Folks, what they've been doing is they just this is just one aspect of how they've been attacking. They said if you if you run a clinic, you now fall under the same regulations as a hospital, the same staffing regulations. You have to have a, do a, a doctor on call there in, in the same way hospitals do. And you know how when you walk into a hospital, the hallways are really wide. That's not by accident. That's just not just good planning so that two beds and and a, and people can pass at the same time. That's regulation. They don't do that because they're good people. They do it because it's the law. You know those big, huge, wide doors that make a lot of sense in hospitals? They didn't do that voluntarily. That's the law. Building codes. So they took those same codes and everybody that that runs an abortion. Now, and you have to understand, 
The vast majority of abortions aren't surgical procedures. It's a prescription. They're done, they're self-induced. Abortion. At very early in the pregnancy. Mephipristone, we just had the Mephipristone case argued before the Supreme Court because it is the overwhelming number of majority. If you issue a subscription, a prescription, not a subscription, a prescription. Speaking of subscriptions, hit the subscribe button, hit the thumbs up button so we can get as many people to see this as possible. Let's get the algorithm to do the work for us. But if you issue that, that prescription, you now have to have hallways that are, you know, 10 feet wide. So these clinics were forced to demolish their clinics and rebuild or shut your doors. And, and most of them, it just made no financial sense. So they closed. And that area of Texas is barren. It is just barren. There are, there are no abortion providers. You have to literally drive like to San Antonio, Austin, Houston, there's just no care there, none. So Lizelle Herrera, at the time Herrera, Gonzalez Herrera, and her name's Gonzalez now, um, became pregnant. She's 26 years old. And you'll notice this is a mug shot. She was 26 years old. She didn't want to be pregnant. So she did a self-induced abortion. She commit, chemically ended her pregnancy, which is her right to do. You can't force women to be pregnant. Oh, no, though. <laughs> ah, ah, this is Texas. Hold my bear. Hold my bear. Hold my bear. You got... The Star County District Attorney. One second, I'm having a, I'm having a technical issue. Hold on. Give me just one moment. There we go. Got it fixed. Thanks, folks. Thanks for hanging in there. Um, but you've got the Star County District Attorney guy by the name of Gocha Allen Ramirez. This guy, this effing guy. He charged her with murder. So they were bullying the, ho bullying the hospitals down there. And this is the ADA that helped him. Alexandria Barrera. Yeah, a woman. They bullied the hospitals down there so much that when Lizelle Gonzalez Herrera did what was her legal right to do and ended, her, ended the pregnancy she did not want, she went to the hospital to get checked out to make sure she was okay. Hospital ratted her out. They reported her. And when they reported her, this DA took that information, went to a grand jury and told them that Texas law says that's murder, so they indicted her. Sheriff's Department arrested her. Yeah, there you go. Jeanette, you're right. The Texas sheriffs are down there. The, that, this part of the story hasn't even come out yet with the Sheriff's Department. You're absolutely right. And somebody just made a comment about HIPAA. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. They are bullying these hospital systems into violating HIPAA. The HIPAA reg the regulations that protect your privacy and security, they are threatening these hospitals so much that they're, they're, they're like, what the hell do we do? That's Republicans for you. Use the force of government to make people break the law. And, and, and here's the thing. They arrested her, threw her in jail for three days. She had a half million dollars, $500,000 bond. 
She was in jail for three days before she was bonded out. Then they dropped the charges. They dropped the charges. One, because it blew up in the media last year. And two, it wasn't against the law. They lied to they lied to get the indictment. There was nothing in Texas law that said she could not do this. Even the laws banning abortion in this state don't charge the woman because politically that was a third rail at the time. They they were terrified of it when they passed this law. They didn't, you know, we were saying, look, they're going to charge women. They're going to charge women. They're going to arrest women and throw them in jail. And then they did it. They did it. They arrested her. They threw her in jail for prison. And she is suing their ass for it. And the courts are saying, do it. Good. Good. Every legal expert in the state, the reason they withdrew the charges is it started raining lawyers, right, left, middle, everywhere that said that is not the law. You can't. That is not the law. You cannot charge her with murder. This is the law. They want to, folks. They just don't have the legal statutes yet. But they're going to get them. They're going to get them. If you don't vote, they're going to get them. Thanks for the support, Peter. I really appreciate you, my friend. They're telling you what they want to do. They're willing to break the law to do it. They lied to a grand jury, and that's where they lost their immunity. That is the beautiful beautiful part about this. They have lost their immunity. See, rightfully so, DAs have immunity from being sued from doing for doing their job. If they didn't, every crook that had any means whatsoever would sue the DA and they would just be deluged in freaking lawsuits all the time, just as a form of defense. So DAs rightfully so smartly have immunity. What they don't have immunity from is when they commit a crime. And that's what they did here. They lied to a grand jury. They locked a woman in jail. She permanently, for the rest of her life, has on her record that she committed murder. She was indicted for committing murder. That will never go away. And thank God she's suing him. The only problem is this is Texas and there are limitations on how much she can sue for If this was L.A. or New York, she could sue them for half a billion dollars. In Texas, she's going to sue them for a million bucks. And somebody like Timothy Mellon is going to pay it. Because it's a drop in the bucket for them. He makes that in the morning. No, no, people do not harass me. Not with my mouth. <laughs> I, I, I don't, I don't, hand, I don't respond well to harassment, and and I think people have that figured out. I'm a fairly aggressive individual. Oh man, that coffee's good. Thank you. But yeah, folks, they're telling you. Let's just wrap this up. Let me sum this up. And please, hit the thumbs up button. Hit the subscribe button. Let's get this going to everybody. They need to hear this. What are they telling you? Trump for life. Trump for life. Scrap that 22nd Amendment. They're saying it out loud. What what, What are they telling you down at the border? Doesn't have to be reality. Just make the shit up. You know, I mean, what are they telling you? They're willing to change facts and, and, and you know, it's like, oh, Easter's under attack. Nobody's attacking Easter. A day of trans visibility has been around for years. 
But no, let's act like it's happening right now today. Climate teacher John, John Jay says, use the force of democracy to protect the community of life. Thank you. Thank you. So let me leave you with this, folks. And if you got any questions, we'll, I'll be glad to do a roundtable. Uh, we've got plenty of time left. Um, but just let me leave you with this. It's not just something cute I say. It's just documented fact. We all do better when we all do better. I mean, even the rich jackholes like Timothy Mellon do better. Sharks get fat when there's food in the water. Sherry Foster says, happy Easter to all. From Oak Harbor, Washington, glad to see you're here. Glad to see you're here. We all do better when we all do better. And people are just people. LGBTQ plus people are just people. They are who they are. Heidi G, Superwoman, I call her Superwoman. Heidi Gordon, Superwoman's here. Happy Transgender Day of Visibility. Thank you, Heidi. Ben Aloko's here. A crazy hippie chick. She's got a show, by the way. She'll link to you, she'll link it to you in the in the in the chat. She's got a she's got a talk. She's she is doing her own commentary. She's been hanging around with folks like me and us for long enough. She's doing her own thing, man. But yeah, folks, we all do better when we all do better. And people are just people. And that's what they're desperately afraid of, is that you'll just get to know some people and you'll realize, you know, that's the way they used to keep, uh, you know, racism as, as a mainstream part of life, was they would create fictional narratives about black people, Hispanic people, and, and, and it just did not survive us all getting together and hanging out, man. Do that. Do that. Get to know a trans person. Get to know somebody, a member of the LGBTQ plus community. Go to a show. You'll see they're just people living their lives. Linda Orndorff, Texas Paul, when uh, first started watching you, I thought you were a little radical. <laughs> now I want to be <laughs> I want my own back. Amen, sister. Amen. Well, that's the way we've got to be. Folks, there's just no, there's no, him hawing around about this. There's no middle ground on this. You have got to be willing. You've got to be willing. Not just me. You, you have to get out there. You have to be loud like me. You have to, you know, if you, if you're not, I get it. I get it. What I do, you know, I'm not going to blow my own horn here, but try it. This ain't easy. I tell people all the time, try doing what I do. This isn't easy. Find the information, know what's important. Stay in touch. All of that, it's a talent and a skill, and I'm proud to have it. I'm glad I have it, and I'm glad I can share it with you. But if you can't do that, that's okay. You can still communicate. And you've got to, because look what's on the line. Good to see you, Beniloco. She's She's been what uh, she's great. I like Beniloco. I do. She's great. She's a good kind of crazy. <laughs> but you've got to. You've got to. Folks are telling you they're going to make Trump king. They're not telling you for no reason. Let me tell you how this works politically. I told you the narratives start getting planted a couple months ago. That's when the narratives come out. And this portion of the election season is the repeating the narratives part so that they get to be common so people aren't appalled by hearing them or shocked or repelled in any way. It's just normal. And that's what the Republicans are doing. That's why people are like, why the hell did they put that out in print? Why did they put the 2025 project out in print? Good God, don't they know we're going to read this? They want you to read it. 
Cecilia Sims says Repub Republicans need a boggle man, a, bo a bogey, a, pardon me, a boogeyman. And she's right, always. There's always got to be a boogeyman with them. Look at look at this. I mean, we're Easter. We're going to have a good Easter. We're going to go out. We're going to do, you know, church, ham, and chocolate, man. What a good day. And they're out there screaming about transgender people. Thank you for the support. I appreciate it. But folks, I'm telling you, we have to. We have to be loud, be aggressive. You know, I, I, I'm telling you, folks. And I put this out, and I mean it. I mean it. They're telling you about the 2025 project. They're telling you about they want Trump for life because that's exactly what they're going to try to do. It's just like the abortion issue. It's just like the abortion issue. Uh, Heidi, I appreciate that. I, I appreciate that. I really do. Thank you very much. You're welcome. I'm I'm very glad to get the word out, GW St. Louis. And happy spring to you too. Happy spring to you too. But folks, I, I, I'm telling you, this is just not. It's not. It, there's a method to the madness. And that's why we're talking about it here. You know, I'd like to tell you that there's no manipulation to what I do and whatever. No, there very much is. I tell you about Frank Luntz so that you can know that he is a dangerous freaking man who's very good at this. And when you so that when you start getting those messages, you recognize them for what they are. That's an agenda. I'm not going to lie. That's an agenda. I want you to be armed for that fight. They have agendas too. They're telling you this out loud to desensitize people to the conversation. Yeah, Trump should be king. In four months, you're going to have every jackhole right-wing freak that you've ever seen on X-Chan and all these social media sites are going to be arguing that Trump should be king. The 2025 project, I had a discussion with a right winger the other day, and he looked me in my face. I mean, and not a not an online exchange. I mean, a personal conversation at a local burger joint. He looked me in my face and told me, yeah, Trump probably should burn it all down and we'll start over. They've gotten their people to accept gutting our government. That's why they put it out there, folks. So you have to get very loud about how unacceptable this is. That has to be the narrative that swamps all. Women have been wonderful. Women have been wonderful about what they've done with Roe. I hate that it actually came to the, to the fact that they were able to do it I screamed and screamed and screamed they were going to do this. But women have been wonderful in their in their reaction. We are destroying them in elections because women have made it very clear. Democrats will protect and restore your rights. Republicans are not done taking them away. And Social Security and Medicare and Medicaid. They mean what they say, and they're telling you they're going to take it. They mean what they say. Get out there. Make sure the narratives are this is not acceptable. That this is outside the norms. It is not part of our society. We're not going to do it. Abortion was never their right to take. Social Security is, is your entitlement. And people run away from that word entitlement. It's not an entitlement. I paid for it. That's what an entitlement is, folks. If you go to the McDonald's drive through you order your food. Not an entitlement. You get to the first window. You pay for your food. Your food is now an entitlement. Because you are entitled to that food when you get to the next window. That's all an entitlement is. It's that it's that Frank Luntz wordsmithing. It's that Frank Luntz wordsmithing. They told you an entitlement was bad. You know, they made liberal a bad word for a long time. Don't play their game. 
I'm a very proud liberal. You should see the heads I set on fire because my bios always say liberal, flaming liberal, usually. Don't play their games. And that's what I need from you, folks. That's what I'm going to sum it up as. I know I've been going long here. Thank you for sticking with me. You know, this is what I need you to do. Never allow the words and the things that they put out. The conversation about Trump, they need to get rid of the 22nd Amendment, needs to make you scream. That is un-American. That is unpatriotic. Every time, loud, scream it, capital letters in your social media. So they can never normalize that. That's what you do, folks. That's what we're doing here. This is combat. Believe it or not, this is political combat. Terry McHugh says, keep doing what you do. Thank you for playing. I appreciate that. That's, I know, folks, I know these donations are a lot of money, and, and it's not easy. And I'm very grateful for them. I am. It allows me to do this full time. It allows me to dig into this stuff and keep track of things. And it, it really does. When I say you keep the lights on around here, you literally make this possible. And I'm very grateful because I know 50 bucks, man, that's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. Tracy Moore says, happy Sunday, Mr. 20 bucks. Look at that right there. 20 bucks. That ain't cheap, man. That's more than an hour's labor for a lot of really good people. I didn't get to read that comment, but thank you for the support, Tina. I appreciate you. Happy Sunday, Mr. Paul. Keep up the great work getting the truth out there. We love you. Thank No, thank you. Keith and Tracy from Colorado. Good to see my Colorado people here. We got Colorado people here, Michigan people here, New York people. A lot of our people in upstate New York have been have been emailing me to let me know that upstate New York is in the house. <laughs> but yeah, if you've got any really good questions or anything out there, you know, I'm more than happy to stick around with you. But that's what I've got for you today. Rant over. Yeah, for 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 they said, oh shoot, this guy, this guy beat us four times in a row. We can't have that. And now that they want their guy to be in forever, they're like, well, we can't have those limitations. It's always rules for thee, not for me. And people, when I say talk and 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 engage, I don't mean talk to Maka. I don't. I said this the other day on Brando's show. A bee does not waste his time explaining to a fly that honey is better than shit. Don't. If someone is MAGA, they are lost. They are a lost soul. You scream to the people in the room that aren't engaged in politics. You scream to the people in the room that are good and decent people left. If someone is MAGA, they're gone. They're not good people anymore. There's no way at this point, having looked at Donald Trump and said, okay, I'm MAGA. No way to be a decent person. But you are wasting every ounce of breath speaking to them. Block and move on. Block them and move on. I, I will say it to you one more time. A bee does not waste his time explaining to a fly that honey is better than shit. Don't waste your time on MAGA at all, but scream loudly. If you see something, say something. Just don't waste your time arguing with them. Wisconsin vote blue on April 2. No on the referendums. Thanks, Texas Paul, for all you do and the, and the continued education. Now, hey, I appreciate you, and thank you for putting the word out there. Oh, by the way, we have uh, a uh, an eclipse coming, too, next week, so keep an eye out for that. Keep an eye out for that. Something I want to check on real quick while y'all are coming up with, um, while y'all are looking. All right. 
ET says, please donate to various, uh, sorry for cutting that off. Please bring it back up. ET says, uh, donate to various democratic candidates and get the, get out the vote. By the way, the eclipse is a week from tomorrow. This is where I'm from, all MAGA, and if I didn't speak to them, I'd have no one to talk to. Don't talk politics with them. Don't. I mean, don't take any crap off of them. I don't. You don't have to let them say stupid shit, but really, uh, don't waste your time on them. Don't, I, you know, I live in Texas. You think they're in MAGA around here? Yeah, blocking, blocking MAGA is healthy for your mind and body. Arguing stupid crap is not good for you. It isn't. It isn't. They'll have you arguing whether the grass is green and the sky is blue, and they will bring up shit that is just made up crap and act like. I had a guy put a, talking about the border, talking about Title 42. And if you look at what happened uh, in in March of 2020, uh, March of 2020, Trump put Title uh, 42 into effect. It was horrible for immigration. It's one of those things that we, that sounded like a really good idea on paper, but when it went into practice, when it went into practice, they came up with Title 42 with good intentions. In an emergency, hey, let's streamline the uh, immigration process so that, uh, you know, we don't have to do the due process thing in an emergency. In an emergency. And it seemed like a good idea. Turns out it's horrible for immigration because there's no teeth to it. It just allows people to just try and 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 try. Caused a massive spike in illegal immigration. We said, okay, that that was a bad idea. And Joe Biden tried to get rid of it. Republicans sued to keep it in place. So if you look at the statistics, as soon as, as you know, they sued to keep it in place because it caused illegal immigration to spike like crazy. And and Republicans have nothing to run on. They've done nothing. So all they have to do is have is to complain about this. So they have the situation that Trump created. Remember the old Joseph Goebbels things. Accuse your enemy of being guilty of uh, of that which you are guilty. Accuse your enemy of that which you are guilty. They caused this. Trump engaged Title 42. Biden came into office in, in November, or pardon me, January of 2021, and said, this isn't working. This is causing mass uh, flooding of immigration. Let's get rid of it. My governor sued him to keep him from, from repealing Title 42. And then they created this narrative now. This is their narrative. Joe Biden repealed Trump's era, uh, the, the Trump era immigration reforms, and now we have massive illegal immigration. No, it's not true. They take the numbers from when we had Title 42 in place, which was all they're doing, which were the massive numbers, and ignore that it plummeted. Illegal immigration plummeted. As soon as we brought Title 8 back, illegal immigration fell off a cliff. But they take all those millions of engagements that happened under Title 42, and they transfer it on to Biden and say, it's Biden's fault. So this guy, where I'm going with this, is this MAGA guy, has a fake chart that somebody put a Border Patrol emblem on. It is not a government. I know what governmental charts look like. I do. Okay. This was as fake as it gets. It was a cheap Excel bar graph where they created fake numbers and then they put a Border Patrol badge on it. And this guy was claiming this was data. No. No. No, that is a complete, I blocked him and moved on. There is no use arguing with someone like that because they either A, created false data intentionally in which they are not an honest broker to have a conversation with, or B, have been given such false information that they deeply believe to be true, it is not worth trying to explain to them. Like, you know, Samuel Clemens said, it is much easier to, you know, paraphrasing Mark Twain, it is much easier to fool somebody than to convince them that they've been fooled. Don't waste your time, folks. All I did was I posted real information, real graphs that showed the spike when Title 42 went in place in March 2020, and then the plummet of of illegal immigration after it was finally taken away. The Biden administration repealed it and replaced it with Title 8.
So yeah, that's why I say don't engage. When I say don't engage with them, that's what I mean. Don't engage with them. Yeah, it, they, they do. That's all they've got. They, they cannot engage in reality. They cannot. Ken QB says there's a fake picture of Travis Kelsey wearing a Trump one t-shirt. Yeah, they can't. They cannot engage on reality. Reality has a liberal bias. Mike says, ask them if they believe in presidential immunity and they will tell you straight to your face. And this is why it's not worth engaging to them. They will tell you straight to their face. If it's Trump, yeah. If it's any Democrat, no. Yeah, this is true. MAGA is personality flaws combined with psychological disorder. Yes, that is true. These are people that want to hear these horrible things. Therefore, they are primed to believe the lies. These are people that want to believe that we Democrats. Yeah, I don't believe. I don't. I, I'm clear about that. I don't follow an Abrahamic religion. I do not. I believe in a creator, but I don't don't follow this Christianity, Islam, Judaism. I don't follow any of it. But I believe that this is your holy day and you should have a wonderful holy day. But they, MAGA, want to believe that here comes old Texas Paul and all he wants to do is desecrate and take away your wonderful Easter. It's, it's what they are. It's political grifting on people that have mental illnesses. They want to believe that. They want that to be true. Because if that's not true, if that's not true, then nothing else that they say can hold up. Their entire house of cards collapses. Without, without that war, if you just have to start talking about problems and issues and ways to fix them, they lose. That guy's got to go. Go to Twitch and remove that troll. I am a liberal. I am a flaming liberal. Peter Campbell, unfortunately, they believe sharing the beauty and the bounty with other people is so objectionable, they would rather burn it down. That is true, too. That is absolutely true. Uh, outstanding statement. Outstanding statement. Uh, E.T. says, your get-together with Tennessee Brando was great. Remek yeah, I had a great time talking to Brando. He's doing a good job. He's really doing a good job with this show. He is. Somebody just posted on here talking about a, the, the Harvard study with a link between um, Christian nationalism, white supremacy, and the Russians. Yeah, that's that's all documented. That is just fact. It is the same nonsense they use to control the people in Russia that they're using on the right right now. You know, Sue Clark, you should, Sue Clark, that one first, thanks for the donation. And two, it's weird people can't see the former guy as a dimwit. It is weird to you to you. But remember in 2016, the Russians didn't start in 2016. They wanted to create an environment and they said this. They told us 
that they were doing there. They were so proud of it. They said it out loud. They wanted to create an environment where you couldn't trust facts because once that's created, all you have is your cult, your team, and those will be the only facts you accept. And then you can tell people anything and they'll believe it. So that's where the MAGA is. That's why I say they're useless and lost. There's nothing left to them. They're not tethered to reality anymore, and you can't bring them to facts. You can't. And I, and I tell you what's really scary about it is you're seeing this Voltaire, what the philosopher said, if you can get a man to believe absurdities, you can get a man to commit atrocities. And that is so freaking true. That is so true. That's exactly what they're doing. They have people today that are fighting angry mad that believe that their religion is under assault and that I am trying to somehow convince them, you know, invade their with with transgender uh, um, a, a day of, of trans uh, transition transgender I need a cup of coffee. a day of transgender visibility that I'm somehow trying to do and they're fighting mad about that which is what they want because they've been attacked from reality. They're in that rush created bubble where they no longer believe facts. They only believe what comes from their team. So they're, they're, they're there, man. And, and it will be every event over and over and over again. They really did. They, I mean, they really got us good. And I tell you, that's another reason we need to support Ukraine. We need to make Russia crumble so that they cannot, they don't have the infrastructure to keep coming at this because they never run out of these bullets. It was Hal Sparks that said that. They never run out of this kind of bullet. Uh, Suburban Housewives says, if you, if you don't use your mind, someone else will be glad to use it for you. Excellent. I love you people. I love you people. That is excellent. Absolutely true. Be on the right side of the fence. Jose, Joseph Martinez. Thank you, Mr. Martinez. Thank you for being here. Be on the right side of the fence and vote Joe Biden. Uh, Fair in chat says 420 is Hitler's birthday. Yes, that is true. That's why we stole that and we made it a much better day. Thank you, Willie. All right. And folks, uh, you just have to be patient. We're going to have trolls in here. We, uh, you have grown our audience to the point now that uh, we've gotten noticed. That's where the trolls come from. That That's why they end up here. Uh, folks, uh, organizations like Turning Point USA uh, recruits out of colleges to have people to volunteer to act as online trolls. They do that. Uh, the Russians, they have actual paid troll farms. The Iranians have paid troll farms. Um, it's just it, it's just a thing now. They're all over Europe as well. And the more we get noticed, the bigger we grow, the more we get trolls in here. We keep ejecting them, but they'll just go make a new account and come back. Bingo. We've got them running scared. If we didn't, the trolls wouldn't be here. 
Well, folks, that's what I have for you today. It's it's uh, rolling up on uh, getting close to 1130. If you've got a really good question, a really important question, throw it out there. If not, we'll just call it a day. I appreciate you spending your Easter morning with me. I hope you have a beautiful day. And, man, I, I just want to say this. I really want to say this. This Easter is, or pardon me, this spring is just feeling really different. It is. It just feels really good. I don't know why. Every time I walk into the garden section, I walk into the, I mean, it just feels good. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. Nice weather is coming. I know some folks still have some pretty, pretty lousy weather right now, but just enjoy it. Get out there, get some sun on your face. We're good and decent people, man. Take the good things in life that are coming to you. Have a very happy Easter. And by all means, hug hug your kids and your grandkids today if you got them. Well, this is old Texas Paul out. Enjoy some Texas cities at night.